Okay, so as I was saying, if there's anyone has anything that they would like to discuss that's not on the agenda otherwise, this is an opportunity. Uh, if not, then we'll go on to the, uh, to the next item, and that's our, uh, our public hearings. So the first public hearing is a rezone application from uh, Trish Gustafson and Carol Smith regarding a property uh, on North High Street. Denise, do you want to sure. describe what and this is? Here, here tonight, uh, representing Trish Gustafson and Carol Smith uh, is uh, Brentwood Builders. He'll come up and talk here in a few minutes. Um, this uh, is an application originally uh, uh, Trish Gustafson and Carol Smith um, requested an annexation. Uh, currently, that property, as you can see up on the TV screen, is um, in surrounded by village, but it is actually in Miami Township. So they are requesting um, to bring it into the village. They, when when property comes into the village, it comes in as residential A, and this is a hearing tonight of the Planning Commission to make a recommendation to Council to rezone it to what is also around that area, which is residential B. Um, staff has reviewed um, Chapter 12 ADO2B, the zoning map amendment or the rezoning process. Um, I believe that it's consistent with the goals and the future land use map, uh, as well as the comprehensive um, land use plan and vision. Uh, I feel that way because it does not expand our border um, and allows, albeit only one, single family dwelling, but it will add a new unit to the village for infill. Um, staff has uh, coordinated a meeting with the builders and the electric uh, superintendent and water distribution superintendent and um, also received input from this uh, sanitary su sewer superintendent and they have all given their green light that this will you know be easily able to hook up to um, our existing infrastructure and finally um, this is not going to create a spot zoning where if it sat there with ra it would be Okay, any questions for Denise? Yes. Uh, on the map, on their lot 13, is that in the village then or is that in township? It's to the south of the property. Uh, the, to the south, that is, yeah, that is in the village. Uh, okay. And utilities, how will they be extended to the... Uh, to the property, they're going. See the little red dash line. Right. That is also Trish Gustafson's property. Right. And they'll be hooked up through um, from the street. How will access to the property be? That done? same location. Uh, on Pleasant Street, extending Pleasant Street someday in the future. Is that village property where? It currently is on the west side of High Street. A uh, village has um, a right of way up to the edge of that property, but you can see there there may be a gravel road beyond that, but that's in the township. Okay, so the gravel road is in the township that goes beyond that gray line. Yeah, okay. beyond that double maybe. Is uh -huh. that what it is? So it's a double. Yeah. So south of thirteen is that township? Yes. Yes, that's uh, Dan Dixon's property. Okay. And to the to the west. Yeah. And uh, there was one house on King Street that I walked past today. It was. Uh, it's just to the north of the Gustafson property. Uh, currently, there's a little driveway that the property owner adjacent is using. Um, I saw that one. Yeah, that so have they reached an agreement as to whether... I don't know. Perhaps the builder can answer that. Okay. And I think that's what's it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for Denise? Uh, I, I had a question, just, it's just a general question, really. Is the, the current zoning in the... Uh, in the current zoning, is any 
well there isn't that much land within the village that um, we would be bringing in but that automatic to um, it being uh, residence A versus residence B or C is that in the zoning code now and what was what was it's, the rationale it's, it's behind the, that it's the default so if you annex property it defaults as residence A and why would we have made that decision I think we had to put something there right as a placeholder and I think that's what was at the time decided okay I guess my question the reason I'm asking is because you know part of uh, the thinking at the time was that we wanted to increase density, so it seems odd. And I just wondered if anybody had knew what that rationale was, and if it's something we should look to. What I think tonight, I think what we're doing is looking to whether we just provide you guys with the recommendation that when you consider this annexation, you consider it as residence B. No, I know. So, but next time, I'm, I'm but just, next time, I'm just suggesting be, that that default should be changed. Change. That, it, that there isn't a default that council chooses what based on what's around it or what what would you say the what's well your... like I say I thought uh, we wanted to increase density and we wanted to encourage increased density and I remember at the time the consultant that we had wanted I think wanted to make all of the glass farm uh, residence a as the default so yeah. something was decided and we decided against that I believe um, yeah it's B yeah, so, um, and I, so I, anyway, so what, I don't know that there was any good rationale to what, be default today. Would you, we would you, I was want, just wondering if we should be thinking about changing that. Would you want there to be a default that was B, or would you want the default to be, um, like, up, uh, up to council when they granted well, it? Well, yeah, I can't uh, decide that, but I'm just saying it's maybe okay. a discussion we should have in the future. Yeah, okay. It's an interesting question, though, because when uh, you annexed the Glen Helen, it came in as residential A, and then had to be changed to conservation. Yeah. So it would make sense yeah. to have it sort of default. It just to it what's created another layer of of work. steps to yeah. take when possibly you could make that decision at the just same time that you're going through it. That annexation. Yeah, it's something council could think about. I mean, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Any other questions for Denise? <coughs> okay. Uh, if that's the case, we know for the discussion here, we'll open the public hearing. So if you have anything to add to this discussion regarding this rezoning application, please step to the podium, um, identify yourself for the folks out in Channel 5 land, and uh, uh, feel free. I'm Dewart Headley. I'm one of the, I guess, adjacent property owners. I have one one question. What does it matter at this point if it's zoned A or B, if it's going to be a single, well, a single but a multi-generation single house on it? What does it matter at this point? It doesn't a whole lot, but if it's B, that means that they can, someone in the future distance or near can subdivide it, mm -hmm. and the lot size is driven by the by the uh, designation A or B. Fair enough. That, that would be considering the constraints with that property would actually be tricky to do but oh yeah but otherwise uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for it to be consistent and supportive of having a, another new neighbor so. all right thanks thank you so if we didn't have to change the zoning right if it was automatically be we wouldn't be having this meeting at all and it would just be going to council that's right that's as, okay we're just making a recommendation to council about rezoning it after they annex it, if they annex it. Correct. Okay. Anyone else? All right, if there's no other comments, we'll close the public hearing. Any further discussion? You know, I do have a question. Um, Chris had asked, still no idea, but so you are uh, lot 47. Is there a house on that? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's a, it's a, uh, Garage, I guess. Okay, a garage. Like a, I, I call it an outbuilding. It's an outbuilding. outbuilding. Yeah. Okay. Um, she intends to keep it as a garage. Okay, and so there's going to be. So a it's storage. not a problem then having the driveway, the access. Um, no, but I, I wonder if the builder might be able to. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and could 
because there is that other question that they she had um, about the uh, driveway to the okay I'm John Harkle Road with Brentwood Builders um, so the question about the driveway there seems to be plenty of room between the existing garage and the south property line to get the driveway and the utilities through that area to access the greater space that's being annexed or being proposed to annex. And I'm sorry, Chris, you had a question? Yeah, there's a, uh, the neighbor uses the little parking pad, uh, the neighbor to the north. Okay. There's but a the parking pad. pad. On, on Trish Gustafson's. Right. I, I haven't heard any arrangements for that, so I, don't, I haven't heard what they've talked about. Um, are the lots, once the annexation happens, are these two lots going to be combined? Yes, that's correct. So the 47 and 17 will be combined. Ah. And then the zone, changing the zoning to B would just make when, if it was replatted into separate lots in the future, it would be different size lots, correct? Apparently, every, okay. every discussion that I've had with the owner is that they intend for it to be a home uh, for generations to come for their family. So. Okay. Any other questions for him? Thank you. Um, Thank you. I have a question. So, uh, as if if it were in the village right now and zoned residential A, you could put one house on it, right? Well, if it's one lot. If it's one lot, mm -hmm. before before replatting. Right. Um, if it was residential B, as it is now, before replatting, does the, what could you do more? Are there many things that you could do more no, as it is now? A two family or a, a single family attached. Okay. Well, that would be about it. What you would build now would change slightly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Forgive me. I have oh, sure. Here. Um, the, the owner has worked directly with Marsh Surveying uh, without us being in the picture. And I was asked the question if the, the small existing lot is going to be all one lot with the larger area. It was my understanding that it would be all one lot, but just glancing at the paperwork, that's not clear to me. So I probably can't officially answer that question. So okay. at least for clarity. So. Thanks. But that is your understanding. Uh, I have the same understanding he did, but that's, you know, okay. that's something we can look at. It doesn't change anything because they're both the same owner, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if there's no further discussion, do we, can we have a recommendation to make to council regarding this? I guess I have one more question. I'm sorry, is there a reason a homeowner is in here today? Yeah, <laughs> um, Trish's son, Owen, is, had surgery just a few days oh, ago. Okay. And uh, so they're in recovery and working through all that. So. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I just right. that lingering question. Yeah, I did have that in my notes that she we have to go through the annexation process and then we can we'll do the replat. So okay, Those. of course you can't right. and it's you can't replat something one. that's outside of the yeah, village and combine why. it with something that's inside the village. Yeah. Okay, Matt. Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Jim Mayer. I own property adjacent to this too. And I, I don't know much about this pocket neighborhood development, but what, could this become? Yes. It could, yes. Even if the one house, multi generational house is built, more houses could be built? Is that a yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be rezoned. It's a pocket neighborhood development. Uh, no, no, it doesn't no, have to be. It's a no, no, condition, it's condition of use. It'd be driven by how many you could build. Yeah. How many, how many could you build? As a pocket neighborhood? Uh, you kind of put me on the spot there. I don't know. <laughs> it depends upon the size. Yeah. It hasn't it's passed yet. It's, it's not. Is it eight? Eight. Eight for residential. Well, yeah. Eight what? Eight units for residential B. That's a minimum or a maximum? That's maximum. Per acre. 
per acre. Per That's acre. one point seven acres plus right. the particular lot. One point eight. And the current house would count as one of those. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if if it if that were to happen, it's conditionally allowed, right? Mm -hmm. So that there would be another really like there would be another hearing. It would go through um, planning commission or or whatever. You, you seem to be saying that you think that's a possibility. Just what I heard you saying earlier that there might be more. What I heard from our notes from our administrator is that the current owner plans to have it as a single uh, home on the lot. Oh, that's, we don't that's, know what the, the what we don't know yeah. what the that's all the auction. I think yeah. it's been sold twice since. I mean that doesn't preclude them from someone of course. buying it next year and yeah. doing that. Right. But they would have to come to planning commission. They would have to have a public hearing. You uh, would get notified. And then it would get approved. Well, it's a conditional use. So, I mean, I mean, planning commissions always try to approve what we can, but we also try to take the, into account the concerns of the adjacent property owners and neighbors. And and if so, if, so if something that's you know a, a particular thor, then you know we try to deal with that. And also, you know, plan unit development that has that's not part of the zoning code as it is now. Pocket, sorry, pocket no neighborhoods hasn't been gone through and become part of the zoning code. So, you know, like if you have concerns about that, particularly as someone who's living next to a, a property that's large enough to for that to. My concern you know. is that I'm building a house here. I put a big picture window in it, and it's five feet from the fence. Yeah. So, am I going to be looking at someone five feet from the fence on the other side? Right. Which could happen. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Could happen now, too. Okay, do we have a recommendation regarding this um, I move, application? I move to approve the uh, rezoning from A to B. Second. Was that Rose? That was Judith. 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 Sorry. Reed. Uh, yes. Pilzel. Yes. Sherbukin. Yes. Styles. Yes. Simply. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Next item is the uh, amendment to Chapter 1262.08 regarding the uh, addition of pocket neighborhood developments with specific conditional use requirements. Uh, this is, uh, so the uh, letter we received from um, Jane Baker and Barbara Betcher and uh, Cindy Ream and Pat uh, Steffley all uh, are related really to this consideration, uh, voicing their support for this, especially with respect to senior housing options. Um, Denise, do you want to walk through the... Yes, um, I took this to uh, council at their last, was that the July, the last meeting? The 17th. The 17th, 19th, yes. I'm sorry, 19th. 19th. Um, and just to give them an overview of what Planning Commission was considering, uh, just explain to them what the, a pocket neighborhood development is, um, that Planning Commission is looking at this as a way to um, answer the concerns that we keep hearing of people needing to downsize from their larger homes into something smaller and as a way to fulfill the um, uh, vision plan uh, for infill development as well as the 2013 zoning code update for more infill development. And this is what we have been working on, have come up with. Uh, the uh, council had a couple questions uh, about uh, the parking in particular and um, so I addressed those and then I also had some more things that I wanted to go over with you as well so I thought maybe we would just start with uh, chapter 1262 uh, under the conditional use requirements um, if it's okay with you, I'll just launch right into it. Is that all right? All right. Okay. So under B density and minimum lot area, 
on number seven, um, we talked about um, an existing single family dwelling or duplex structure will count as one dwelling unit towards a minimum of four. Well, and I didn't know, we had talked about um, allowing that to be um, changed to a community room or some other t type of meeting uh, house. Um, but it could also be a dwelling. And I was wondering if you have a dwelling uh, unit that's really large compared to maybe a lot of the what the other ones would be, would we want to have a certain size restriction once it gets to, if it's over a certain square footage, then it needs to be used as a community room and not a dwelling. Or um, I talked with a person the other day that said, well, if we had it as a community room, would we be able to have, if we have uh, guests that come to visit us, could they stay in that? And I know we had talked about not allowing accessory dwellings, but this really is an accessory dwelling. I just kind of want to make sure that we're all clear on what the this ex existing dwelling can be used for. So I guess I have a question. We probably have to have discussed this, but are we envisioning this pocket neighborhood of that the housing units that are on it that they are all similarly sized? Typically in a pocket neighborhood development, they are. Yeah. Okay. That's not particularly how we're going. Yeah. 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 Because we're, yeah. The additional information that you gave us uh, for reading material was very informative. And the um, Exhibit C, I think it is, from Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and they were the ones that came up with the cottage housing, the concept. I thought it was very, very good uh, reading. But And one of the points that they uh, made is, is uh, not to be too limiting mm -hmm. in your uh, zoning because it's, it's a new concept. And uh, you know you have to stay within what is happening in the area as as being important as well. The zoning provides the neighbors to the property with some understanding as to what restrictions there can be, but that the pocket neighborhood is um, is still somewhat in flux as far as, as definition. So for this particular question you had of an existing dwelling, I'd say whoever is developing that um, uh, pocket neighborhood or cottage neighborhood, have them make that decision and let's not put it into um, code. I think that can be defined by the builder, the developer, and uh, they can either keep it as a dwelling or make it into a two family or or go ahead and make it a community room or center for right okay let's not be so restrictive in our zoning language that we can't be flexible with situations that arise so by not limiting that particular existing dwelling as to how you can use it you know let it happen for whenever the situation comes up that's my two cents okay Thanks. i think that's a good point yeah and i i agree totally I mean, I mean, we don't want to put restrictions on that there's no purpose to other than we try to tell people how they should do things, and that's right. not a good reason. Right. right. I agree. I think we're all in agreement there, please. Okay. Good. All right. So under E, yard setbacks. Um, you had a question oh, under C. Well, height. What did C. I say? The oh, height. Height, yeah. Um, that was another thing. Uh, we, we talked about keeping the uh, height the same as what's in the code. And I just noticed as I was reading through all of these, these uh, pocket neighborhood development legislations that they tend to be more cottage style. Um, and therefore, they tend to be 24 to 28 feet in height. But then that might get it out of sync with what exists. So maybe, like you said, maybe we should just let that go and let it be what it is. I'd say let it go. I do too. Okay. Okay. Anyone disagree with that? No, I, I don't see why it, it should be yeah, I mean, less than 35. 
Okay. Under E yard setbacks, um, I noticed something um, in there that said we have the side yard setback as a minimum of 10 feet between the ease of each dwelling unit, but I just want to put in there if everyone is okay with that, unless single family attached. Because that's not going to happen if you have a. Oh, right. If it's attached, yeah, there wouldn't right. be any. Yeah. It'd be zero lot line. Yeah, okay. So then we go with one or two. Uh, it's under number one. It'd be the uh, the last, uh, yeah. The side yard setback, the last sentence, the side oh, yard yeah. setback is a minimum of 10 feet between the ease of each dwelling unit unless single family attached. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do we need to get approval for that or do we, do we need to get approval on that or vote on that or? We'll do it at the end. Okay. Is there a right. back setback? Like one? Yeah. Yes. What follows if, the yes. code. Yeah. But what if they were back to back? Doesn't that happen? It might, I guess. The, the back is, the, the front ends, ends up being where the common open space is, and the back is, faces either the street or the it okay. could be if there was another street. If there was a street was and then like the common area the front, and like, the front, you the know, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess it I, could be. And then you could have your. So you're thinking like if it were a fourplex? Um, but this doesn't allow for, for we not allow It doesn't plex. allow We only allow a duplex. Plex. Yeah, right. I guess, yeah, that would be weird, I suppose. That's fine. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure this I'm clear on this on the if all the dwelling units have to have a minimum of 200 square feet of contiguous usable open space adjacent to each dwelling unit then can we state that 200 square feet can be private are we saying that 400 square feet of common open space is required next to the dwelling unit or are we saying that you know some of that 200 square feet could be somewhere else it doesn't matter but collectively you have I mean, to it says contiguous. Only 200, but see. 200 is contiguous. So 200 square feet has to be contiguous, but then we said you could have 200 to be private. So if you're saying, you know, I'm trying yeah. to say, you could, I, then, I then all of a sudden. I, I thought our intent was that you could, you could put the other 200, you could group it so that you'd have a larger open area that was common. That was my understanding too. Ooh. Okay, but then okay. it's a minimum of four per unit. Of which two hundred is contiguous. Which two hundred is contiguous. So your question is, can that two hundred be private? Mm -hmm. And up to two hundred. What would? Well, two hundred has to not be private, and. 200 can be private. I, what's the question? The idea is that we, is that these, um, and of course this is something we can also talk to the, the developers of the property about, but typically the, the dwelling units are centered around a common open space. Mm -hmm. So if, if uh, three, four units are around a common open space, they have to throw in 800 square feet of common open space and another 800 square feet total that can be private. So in other words, I guess they could have a little private yard and then behind and at the sides. Mm. <laughs> or maybe even off their front porch. They can't have it covered. Only 50% of that private can be covered with a porch. I didn't hear your presentation. You know, I wasn't at the meeting. Uh, oh, I didn't get into this kind of detail. Okay. Yeah. But why? Well, I, I mean, just the whole concept. So I'm a little bit lost. But um, I guess I would always say, if there's, if we're going to make rules, there should be a, re a purpose to it. And I'm not quite understanding. It, the, the under. The idea is that. You're the, I know the, there's common space, right. so, you have less, so you have less private space. So do we want to? Do we, we don't want to have so much private space, then that everybody's separated again. I mean, this the whole idea is this is a, is everybody. It's a 
they all know each other, they all uh, see each other, they right. talk to each other, and if we have so much private, yeah. then that decreases that. So your ultimate question is, can 200 of the 400 be private? And are we okay with that? That's what we had said. We had said 200 of the 400 could be private, and then we went on to say that um, front porches, though, are not included in the private open space calculation. So if you're going to have a front porch, then you still have to have 200 feet of private space and 200 it, feet of contiguous common. It does seem like it's contradicting itself, right? A minimum of 400 square feet of common open space and then up to 200 square feet of the open space is that of the common open space can be private because that would be contradictory, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Of, I mean, you can't you can't say up to 200 square feet of the common open space can be private because that wouldn't make it common open space. I guess are we saying maybe that the developer has to allow for 400 square feet per unit and of that 200 has to be common and 200 can be private yeah so that's, just, what, that's what we're actually saying yeah so if we just delete common right there yeah okay just delete the in word the first sentence mm -hmm. well and we yeah, you're right and we want to yeah delete open space okay and then it's a and then instead of we could say up to 200 square feet of the open space or a minimum of 200 square feet of the open space must be common open space have we even de defined common open space? yes we have a, we okay. have a definition okay yeah which i included so. and so do we want to leave in the contiguous usable open space With a minimum of 200 square feet of contiguous of usable open space. Yes. I guess, I yeah, so. if we leave that in and then just delete the up to 200 square feet of open space can be private, right? Delete that sentence. A minimum of 400 square feet of open space is required per dwelling unit with a minimum of 200 square feet of of contiguous usable open space adjacent to each dwelling unit yeah. with no dimension less than 10 feet. Uh, yeah. I just have a philo philosophical question for you. It, it's sort of interesting that with regard to the building size and structure, doesn't say you thought, about let's not limit the developer. Right. And now we're talking about open space, and you're saying, well, let's limit that no. developer. Micromanaging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't, no, we're not micromanaging. We're saying that per unit, there has to be at least 200 square feet of contiguous, usable, common open space. But we're also saying that there has to be at least 200 square feet of open space, common or not, per unit as well for a total of 400. I, I guess though we weren't saying common, we were saying private. Could be up, could, it could be 200, yeah. up to 200 for But it, it could be, it could be private or, so maybe we want to yeah. leave it that, just that there's the 400 square feet and of that, I mean if that's what we want, 400 square feet provided by the de developer and of that 200 has to be contiguous open space and just leave it common at that. Common open space. Common. Common, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And then it needs it to be rewritten. Well, we have to do that now. Yeah. Right? On, on, on the Seattle, again, going back to that uh, uh, Exhibit C on page 6, um, they were talking about setbacks, but what their idea is uh, doing an average of the setbacks uh, to provide design flexibility. Um, so we could say that there must be uh, a certain size, a common area, but that we can average the uh, the space that uh, is near 
is more private based on the size of the um, dwelling. <coughs> Confusing you even more, yes. So, That's right. Yeah. Because um, they talk about it's based on the density. They, they based it on the density, the common. Um, I don't think we're far off from where we need to be on this. Um, I don't know. Open spaces required. The, the comments was because the emphasis of a cottage development is on common central open space, peripheral areas should not be expected to have much utility. Therefore, setbacks should be minimized so the central common space can be maximized. If setback averaging is used, the cottages closest to the property line may be those with the least bulk. What page was that on? That's page six of uh, Exhibit C under the setback, so it's not. But to define how much open space, not knowing exactly what the size of the property is, yeah. is, is, is uh, it's, sort of bothered me. But it's per unit. If they can't fit that much open space in, then they just can't build that many units. That many units. Right. Very good. Yeah. yeah. But I guess that's part of, you know, right. part we were of what, trying to what you were saying is right. the number of units that they could put on it. Like an acre in, what is it, RC, you could put 14 units. Yeah. Right. We don't know, and I guess we never sat down and worked it out. Will it work out for there to be um, 400 square feet for those 14 units? Well, if you're in, you're including open space between buildings, mm -hmm. right? I I asked this question when we were writing it, you know, like how many could you actually fit in within this given size lot or this given size lot, and we didn't sit down and do the math then. Well, we we were sick. We didn't change anything. That was in the code before the number of yeah. units per acre. Yeah. I mean, six, eight, and we were leaving were setbacks there. the same. I mean, I think what you know, what, what we, we are don't putting... want is to be able to have every single person that comes with a lot and says they want to do this. We don't want it to always work. Yeah. I mean, but it's... but is it actually like increasing density if we're putting the the required common open space? Like that's the question, right? Like no, you're not necessarily increasing density. Increasing density. No, you're not. You're just allowing the builder to rearrange things so that you have shared common space. Yeah. And everybody doesn't have their little yard that they. Yeah, it's 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 so that like parking and other kinds of things can be shared on one lot mm -hmm. with multiple owners, part of the homeowner association, and so it's not it's not changing what could happen with a given lot, it might actually be, because you're lessening the res the conditions for all these other things like setbacks and stuff, you'll have more room to have common open space and stuff like that. Right. So it increases one thing and decreases one thing, and but the overall density doesn't really change. That's the intention. I think that's the way it works out. Yeah. But the problem with what we're proposing is we don't know if you can actually, if it works. Yeah. And we really need to actually do a scale if somebody right. has a program where you can yeah, put that in and um, see, does that work? Or let's keep it simple for now so we can keep moving forward with this. And, and um, most of the zoning codes do have a minimum of mm -hmm. anywhere from 200 to 400, whether it's common or contiguous or private, that stuff we put in there. Yeah. Again, on Exhibit C, page five, at the bottom of the page, they had three uh, housing examples that they have constructed in the Seattle area, and that's the examples that they're using. I think. Um, the Ravina. And that was the one that had 200 square feet. Yeah, they have 200 square feet per unit. Well, another one had 575. Right. And one had 
to 780. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ravina, um, the number of units for that uh, development was nine, and the uh, Greenwood development was eight units. And so that's what they're specifying for uh, their common open space. So they're defining it by Based the housing the unit. Units. Which we could do that, too. Well, since we know that the maximum units, like with, with RC, is 14, could we just say, I mean, really for all of them, R, A, B, or C, that there is that there is a minimum of 200 square feet in this contiguous usable open space? Yeah. And just leave it at that. A minimum of 200 feet squared shall be contiguous usable common space? For open space, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and not say anything about private. So we're not putting a minimum or maximum on private that they would, you know, have to work it out. They could put more in the common space if they wanted, or but they couldn't go under 200. Yeah, I think that works. Well, it's kind of contradictory of the uh, intent, though, of the pocket neighborhood to have is common shared space. Like a 10 by 20. 10 by 20 is. It is what? I'm, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it. what they're saying is per unit of the common space per unit, 200, there should be 200 square feet per unit. So if you have two units, it's 400 square feet of open space. So you want the, okay, so the 200 feet squared would be contiguous, it, usable, common space. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood you. And then the extra 200. You wouldn't say not, anything? It's, it's yeah. Not, you don't even mention it. They don't even mention okay. it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, but I do think that, I don't know if this is addressed somewhere else in what we've written, but the, um, no dimension less than 10 feet thing mm -hmm. that we're cutting right now if it's is it addressed in yard setbacks you know the side yard setback is a minimum of 10 feet between the eaves of each dwelling unit on 1e does that cover that and we don't need to think about it so about the yard setbacks it? just talk about the perimeter yeah but w w what we're cutting from f when we say when we're cutting the with no dimension less than 10 feet, because we're not talking about. We could still add that. We to can it. still yes. have that. So a minimum of 200 square feet of okay. common open space per unit with no dimension less than 10 feet. Okay, we're not cutting that. Okay. And then yeah. let's not okay. cut the other part. Um, front no, we'll cut that. Um, I'm saying the uh, part about at least 50% of the dwelling units shall abut the common open space. All the dwelling units shall be within 60 feet walking distance to the common open space, and the common open space shall have dwelling units abutting at least two sides. We're keeping all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Are you keeping the front porch? No. Okay. The front porch is not included. Oh, unless, um, no, because uh, we are. Because it's not going to be contiguous open. Right. Common well, because, contiguous it's not open be space private, anyway. So there's yeah. no reason to define it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you, you can you no? Can okay. you read through that as amended now? As um, uh, number F required common open space, a minimum of 200 square feet of common open space per unit, with no dimension less than 10 feet. Oops. At at least 50. Oh wait, with, yeah. At least 50 percent of the dwelling unit shall about the common open space. All the dwelling units shall be within 60 feet walking distance to the common open space, and the common open space shall have dwelling units abutting at least two sides. We're not saying contiguous? No. Contiguous, usable, common space? Yeah. It, you want contiguous to needs to be in there. Yes. A minimum no, of I think 200 so. square feet of usable open, open space. Contiguous. Contiguous. Open usable, space. common space. Yes. Contiguous, usable, common Okay. Open space. All right. <laughs> Lots okay. of that. That sounds good. Okay. Read it again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I got that. You got that. So I'm going to read it. Okay. okay. So you were sure. 
A minimum of 200 square feet of contiguous usable common open space is required per dwelling unit. And no, oh, should we cut that? At least 50% of the dwelling units shall abut the common open space. No. no. Oh, wait, with no dimension less than 10 feet? Per dwelling unit That's with, with no dimension. dimension less than 10 feet. Okay. Per dwelling unit. You want that in there? No. 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 Okay. And then it goes to at least 50%? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of the dwelling units, and then the rest is, is as written. Yes. yes. Okay, got it. Good job, okay. guys. <laughs> On parking, um, a question was raised by council about parking spaces um, being close enough to the units since garages will not be attached. Um, we're saying dwelling units must be within 60 feet of common open space, but there is no such requirement for parking. How many feet in walking <coughs> distance should the parking spaces be if we're not allowing accessory structures? And should we state that a row of garages or carports are allowed in the parking area? Can there be instances where parking could be accommodated at the dwelling site? You know, I think the parking, because uh, I wondered about, okay, when you're moving, and if you don't have a place right by the place, if you have a moving van, where do they go to bring your things? or? If you're moving and you want to load your car, I also wondered if it's a senior, um, maybe do they need to have a parking space closer to the house? Mm -hmm. They can have driveways, right? But no parking. Like, can they have driveways? I don't well, think. I mean, from, from what I've seen on uh, these, they, they do have like parking. A lot of them that I've seen they do actually have parking. Yeah, I noticed so in some of the examples here. you had, um, or you could plus, see the parking. Clustered parking, but, but some of them didn't have walking it. path to the to the dwelling units. Because if we're thinking of seniors, right. probably they're going to want to park right by their unit to carry groceries or whatever. Uh, they're going to want right. to be close. Yeah. Judith, you were going to say something? Well, um, I'm just aware of a co-housing uh, development in Amherst, Mass, where I used to live, where they had, uh, basically, they had a separate uh, parking, which, I mean, it wasn't too far away, but it wasn't, six, you know, for some of the units, it was further away, than probably 60 feet. Um, they were like, it was like a carport, a common car, carport. However, the back, the the yard, you could bring vehicles to the into the backyard to come up to the house. Like if you're moving or something, not that you would want that to be happening all the time. Yeah. So potentially, the common space could be a place where people can pull up close to it when they're doing those sorts of things. I mean, that doesn't. I mean, pocket neighborhoods are not just for seniors. So there could be no, different, no. so that, you know, different community, you know, pocket neighborhoods could be organized in different ways. But I'm, I'm inclined again to kind of, I mean, they're not going to be sellable if, if people are walking so far. I mean, they're going to have to consider the needs of the people that they well, You could have somebody with disabilities. And you could. Yeah. So, mobility issues. But I think right. with the, with the idea of trying to not have so much um, the surface yes. area, that's paid. Yes. Um, if we just put something in there as far as these clusters of parking need to be within so many feet of the okay. units. But I'm inclined to not do that. I think that, that we say plan approved by the planning commission. Yeah. We'll let it go with that. Should we say unobtrusive and um, like? reasonably accessible to at least a portion of the units? And that may be it, to say that it's... You're it's saying nice. no. But, uh, but leave it up to the builder, leave it up to the people okay. who are designing yeah. it and building it and buying the places. Right. If, like Judith said, if they're 300 feet away, then people aren't going to buy them. But a lot of times if you leave it to the builder, you won't necessarily... Well, I don't know. You didn't, well, we didn't really say they couldn't do it, I guess. I kind of thought we had, right. but... Yes. I might have been confusing that with the... I mean, if you're going to have a common space, there are going to be some of the units that are not within a closer walking, you know. Well, the common space, what I'm, you know, the common space could be interior and the parking could be exterior, you know, exterior, right. like a ring of, you know, or like a line, you know. There well, there's, be, yeah, there's a lot of different ways you know, to do it, but if you're having common you know, space, it's not parking, you know, I don't know. Sure. So, okay. All right. Okay, then what about your next point about... So Allowing garages or carports. Right now, we're not specific, I believe. 
we we, well, say we said them? we excluded accessory structures so then right then we, we were saying like if you had a unless it was attached to the to the dwelling unit but then you know because what everyone's talking about not having all these accessory structures blocking but are carports accessory structures they are technically they are. yeah but 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 if they're not attached i would think that they could be i don't i wouldn't want to limit that i think the thing was just having accessory structures everybody has these really sheds and rare. different things on yeah. their already small lots i mean i was thinking i thought that 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 kind of thing like outdoor storage bicycle storage carport storage those things would be not separated between the units it would be one thing and right. would be allowed mm -hmm. as we, it wouldn't necessarily be an accessory structure but it would be i mean like I what would a community building be is that isn't that an accessory structure yeah but i think we left that up to the hoa didn't we i thought we did i thought we did it's been a while since we talked about this at, at uh, such depth. Yeah. I recall that we talked about garages being a possibility and carports being a possibility. Okay, why not? And 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 quite and I could see even with this kind of configuration that attached garages could exist because what we're doing is just rearranging the configuration of the property. So mm -hmm. as a senior, I would prefer having my attached garage. <laughs> So why, so we didn't have anything in parking here to begin with. So maybe we should just let let, let that be, not restrict that anymore. Because and then go over and talk more about the accessory structures and maybe changing that language. Yeah, on J two. Because yeah, because accessory structures, if they're detached, are a garage is considered an accessory structure. Right. Okay. So, okay. So let the language under G stay as is. Yes. Yeah. Because it does give you more flexibility. Yeah. It does. They yeah. have to come. The under J, uh, in pocket neighborhoods, we said um, are, li are limited to detached single-family dwelling units in RA, low density residential in RB, moderate density residential in RC, high density up to 50% can be either two-family dwellings that are single-family attached. Um, but what I was reading about is in in others. Uh, pocket neighborhood development codes once they exceed like 12 units they make another cluster they don't let you go so you don't have like this humongous thing of just one big uh, property of one common space with all of these units around it like Hawthorne yeah. like like but once you get beyond 12 units you have to start another cluster with its own common open space is that even applicable? We don't. I mean, that's do we even applicable. have more than an acre of residency that's available for something like this? That's B, but yeah. Yeah. That's 1.7, right? 1.7. 1.8? 1.9. 1.9. Um, so that's B. Glass farm. Eight per acre. Well, but glass right. farm, I think, divided. cannot be high density. Well, that that what was, aren't we just uh, talking? Engineer or something said that it had to be. Oh, well, B or I mean, something. I think we should. I don't want to keep it in a common area. Right but now it's residence B, class mm -hmm. form. Thank you. But J, under J1, right. you're, you're not talking okay, about just true. high density. Well, the, what we're saying is, is do we? We're not limiting it, but we're wanting we're wanting to make sure that that if it gets to be a certain size, then you have to make another cluster. Leave it. Let it. So that's really. Would we not want to leave that to uh, the developer and with the plan brought forward? And then say yay or nay at that time. This, if you want to leave it to the discretion of the planning commission, you're well, just like, saying that this is just too big of a development. No, this isn't. Like if 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 Grinnell Circle was all one lot, right? Like there's that common open area in the middle. Right. Is that kind of like 
the thing that we're trying to avoid when we're talking right. about that? Yeah, if, you, if there weren't any houses in the middle and she said it was Omar Circle and it was just all those houses around the perimeter. You like know. Grinnell Circle has you that have, giant like, yeah. Yeah. field you know, in the center. In this, they would have had to make two clusters once they got to like 12 units. They would have to have two separate contiguous usable common open spaces that separate them from each other. And I again, I think why. we need to be flexible with what okay. uh, the I mean, plan is that. that is presented given the property and yeah, I, mean, I agree. I don't think we should specify it at this point. Okay. Let's look at the flexibility of the Planning Commission, too, to see. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Judith? I don't know why the number is 12. I, guess. I don't either. <laughs> why is it 12? Because, I mean, I again, I mean, there's the, the high density uh, is, is 12. There's only a few. I mean, in the future, someone could buy lots of lots and combine them all. The, their rationale was that you lose that neighborly feeling when you don't keep it more If clusters. you go over 12. That's crazy. <laughs> I think that makes no sense myself. So. Yeah. But that's the pocket neighborhood that's philosophy. The philosophy, yes. Yeah. So. All right, we'll just leave it. As it, as it stands, yeah. and then um, accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed. Okay. And then, but I'm asking. I mean, we're already saying. Well, yeah. so what? Is, so where are people storing their bicycles? And stuff? Right. So. Well, it's got to be part of the primary structure, the storage area. I mean, the accessory structure says it's a separate building. So if you incorporate something into the. Main. I mean, if you have a storage area attached to your attached garage, to your garage but that would be a garage. private, and we're trying and we're talking about right now it says no garages either. Well, no, but we're talking about a parking know. area. No, no, we're, I don't we think didn't it say says that. No we? garages. Well, if so the garage, that's, that's when the accessory structure is. If the garage is not attached to the house, it's an accessory structure yeah. based upon our definition in the code. Okay. Yeah. If it's attached, then it's, it's just part of the house. And I recall in our discussion that we had said yes to uh, like a row of garages or a row of car ports. Uh, yeah, and covered bicycle storage should yeah. be, I mean. I, but. Our, but our last discussion was to get rid of those uh, uh, sheds uh, that everybody wants storage to have. Sheds. Storage sheds. Why? Yeah. Oh, the little individual gardening sheds. I, I know sheds. what you're talking about, but why are we eliminating them? We're, we were eliminating them as separate, separate accessory structures for each unit. I don't think that we were discussing like a oh, community building that had, um, you know, that had acts, had undercover access. Part, part of the problem comments. becomes, uh, because this is one lot, it's really going to be up to either the developer or Green, Green County engineer to create the lot lines. They're, they're paper lot lines. They're not, they, they're, but whatever the lot line becomes uh, will be what that person pays. They'll, they'll own that piece of it, the house and the land on it will pay the property tax on that. And all the common areas are calculated and everybody kind of folds that into there as well. But it, but it becomes difficult in our zoning code when you have a code that says, you know, five feet from the side yard, uh, ten feet from the rear for accessory structures and their placement, you could, it could, it could get pretty not very good looking. Uh, especially if you've got pedestrian pathways. So they were talking about maybe having like co a common place where people could have storage, but you could also do it maybe in your parking area, have storage in with that, or like a covered parking area. But a covered parking area is not allowed right now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the reason people have sheds is they have things that they need to put in them mm -hmm. that need to be protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in, in the draft, not right now, as it stands. Um, I mean, mean, this was part of your fair. discussion where yeah. I kind of said, and the reason that you're considering pocket neighborhoods is that you're looking at something entirely different, an entirely different way of living, an entirely different way of being a community, that those things are now commonly held. <clears throat> no different than if you lived in a large apartment building and put your bike in the basement and your gardening tools down there with everybody else's. You had maybe a caged 
structure that you put your locked stuff in and then a lot of common gardening yeah. equipment was available. But that structure in the draft right now is not allowed. I didn't hear that. Am, am I hearing that incorrectly, that the developer is not permitted to I mean, it says create, accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed. That's accessory to each individual building, but that doesn't, I didn't hear that as part of a common, common area. Right, I don't is think that we incorrect? exclude that. I don't think we exclude a common, whether it's a kitchen or a picnic Wouldn't it be an accessory a, structure? Only if it's on an individual property and it's used for just one. If it's owner. in the common area, if then it's a it's shared not. space. Then I think it's yeah. allowed. We should make that clear. In and the it's code. Right, it should be. I mean, that would be that would address this, right? So under number two, if we add private accessory structures, are not allowed, but privately held or accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed on private. Yeah, you're right. So, private should go. Private. Privately held accessory structures. Yeah, and privately held. Oh, wow. how, how, how Thank do you, you for coming. Thank you. I'm sorry? Go ahead. How were you thinking? Mm -hmm. Just say privately, ex privately held accessory structures and accessory dwellings are not allowed, mm -hmm. comma, but common mm -hmm. shared areas are. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in common shared areas, in they common. are allowed. Well, though, <laughs> did, then do you run the risk of, you know, a little row of 12 yes. sheds? Because, I mean, I, I might just not put it there and let the developer say, say I'm going to have 14 families and I would like to do this with my common area. Okay. So you just want to leave it as privately held accessory to structures? Well, I'm just allowed. suggesting that might be better than the possibility that you're going to have a little ugly row. I mean, I think that's what people want, though, right? Not necessarily. What else? You know, if we if we say privately held accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed, period, then that still leaves it open for in that common. What we yeah. talked about, yes. if if somebody has like a big house and they want to downsize and they're buying, that that bigger house could be made into a place where people could actually guests could come and stay, mm -hmm. and there could be that common kitchen. And that would also allow, that's sort of the accessory dwelling. That would allow that because it would be a common accessory dwelling. Okay. Yeah, I say leave it open ended. Does the common kitchen mean there's no kitchens in the. No, everybody well, has their own. And then there's a common kitchen. There could be. It doesn't have to be. Okay. It's like a space where people could have mm -hmm. gatherings or something. Mm -hmm. And they actually don't have to have. They don't even have to structure. have it. But I mean, if they wanted to. That's they option, could. option. But so we want to we yeah. have to incorporate into it. Okay. 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 So how are we leaving number just two? Just using that word privately held. Privately held accessory structures and accessory dwelling units are not allowed. And that okay. takes care of that. Okay. A P and D okay, what did I say here? P and D shall be located on one lot, all common open space in the control of HOA. Should we add which includes if are not limited to the areas of common open space, parking, roadway, street? Um, oh, um, that was what is not considered common open space. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's approve the CC. Oh yeah, so, so basically the covenants and restrictions that they're going to write, their code, must create a homeowners association that will provide for maintenance of all common areas in the PUD, which includes, but are not limited to, I was just spelling out all the different possibilities that there could be. I think that's fine to add that to the last sentence. Okay. Anybody else? Do you capture them all? I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Shared common buildings or, or shared accessory structures? I mean, in some ways, I think it's fine as it is. All common areas hmm. in the pocket neighborhood development, period. And not listed. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
And then um, council was concerned about rentals, um, especially with the transient lodging issue. They requested we consider this in order to not allow a person to buy one to use for this purpose. If we allow the units to be rented, how do we ensure a person won't buy one or several to use in this way, but yet allow an organization to hold title to it? So, I mean, for example, Home Inc. could use this and is considering using this as a model for their property on Xenia Avenue. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna hold title to the land underneath, but not the house. So I think that we're kind of getting into a, I don't, I don't see how we can, if we're saying up to 50% can be rentals, I think that's more, probably the most we can do. So, so the concern is that it's not a use of like a be Airbnb. 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 So can't you, it, couldn't that be handled in the homeowner association that it talks about that rentals are long-term rentals? Because I think there, in yeah. fact, there are a lot of homeowner associations that indeed say that, you know, that that they're, the houses are limited to either owner-occupied or long-term rentals. It cannot be a short-term. Have yeah. we changed yeah. the yeah. definition yeah. of First rentals term. in the code yet, or is that still up changed. in the air, right? Short-term hasn't been changed. That hasn't been changed. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so then... Or, or do, do are we suggesting that in the code that they or that that be in? I think in this situation, like uh, yeah. Susan said, it, it, uh, the homeowners association generally they don't want the transient; they want long-term neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, putting that, what you said. But if the homeowners. <laughs> If one person owned the whole thing and was the homeowners association, right. they could write whatever they want. Can it be a? Can it be a? Uh, when planning looks at the plan, can it be required by planning commission? I mean, we can require anything, but like we should well, say no, we can require and anything. We can. We yeah. should, well, we can put a condition on it that they need to. I mean, we have to find out. But how about we put? If that's what we want to do, we put it in now. Right. But see, I don't know if we well, so the problem is, is, is that this is, goes back to this discussion about short-term rentals and and the tension between short-term rentals yeah. and affordability yes. and how much, how many times can you rent your home before it becomes a short-term rental? Yeah. Um, well, it seems what, what like is that breaking our, point? Our, it seems like having an Airbnb in a pocket neighborhood just goes against it because the idea of the pocket neighborhood is well, so that you have a that, sense of community. But if it's an Airbnb that you rent out for... 20 days a year, right? Then, you're on or you go away for the summer and you rent yeah. it to someone. So you're renting your own house. Yeah. yeah. Then, you know, that's a different animal than. I mean, and even what if, what if the community for, was like? What if the homeowners association was like? Actually, we want to run this unit as an Airbnb collectively to help pay for our common open space to be mowed. You know, like. I mean, like, then it is a community renting out transient, you know, people, and... I, I think it's a bigger issue, and I think it's something, I mean, I know Judith, you know, I've talked about this. I think it's something that councils, or we need to address with some well, guides from council. Well, we have addressed it. Well, we've talked about it, but then we've said no, right? taken off the I mean, there's a, the, right now, you know, it will be being starting to be addressed, but it's not uh, clear exactly how to, I mean, there's... I don't like I really said, understand councils. I, uh, Chris thought it may not be a zoning issue. It may be something, but it wasn't clear to me when we talked today that he was clear about what exactly the approach should be. It sounded like we were still trying to figure that out, but that is still trying to be figured out in terms of a recommendation. But um, so it, it may not necessarily need to be in zoning. Yeah. But well, we need a definition to make well, zone, to write the zoning code. We not need necessarily, a, a not, differential. If it's something the council is going to do that's a blanket thing for the village, then it just applies everywhere. It sure. doesn't just apply to this. But like the mm -hmm. definition, yeah, they need to blanketly do it for our zoning code to work properly. Zo you know, there needs to be a difference between short-term rental and long-term rental so that we can regulate it properly because right now we are unable to regulate it properly. Right. Mm -hmm. And you read the news, there's a lot of communities where they didn't react fast enough and it's too late. Sure. 
and they're not it's like San Francisco not well because you're looking at the ones that are already right now being used that um, yeah are they grandfathered into whatever or well it would be their choice to come <laughs> to come and get we we, we talked about this it'd be their well, choice to come does this need to be held till that is figured out no I don't okay. think so all right well, I think that you, that council needs to do something for the whole village not just for this and but, it applies across the board. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you know, the thing about the Airbnb phenomenon is it goes both ways. It cuts both ways on affordability. Right. People use Airbnbs so they can afford their homes. Yes. There's right. that aspect. And right. then there's also yes. it so it it's, takes up and the housing. Then, and then it long could term. you know, yeah. can go the other way yeah. where people are buying up houses that they're right. that are being taken off the market for right. rental or ownership. Yeah. So right. It's not a simple answer. So, <laughs> and I don't think we're on top of the legal issues. So that, is is, you know. is councils is fifty percent just too much? Was that the? No, they they just were concerned that if that fifty percent short. I mean, it could be an entire rental area. It couldn't it be entirely rental? No. We're saying we're that said, dwelling oh, units may be individually owned or rented with no more than 50% rentals. And then council was concerned about rentals, especially with the transient lodging issue. Yeah, you should be concerned and fix it. <laughs> we made our suggestion, right? Right now it's 50%. No, I could just imagine these little, uh, if these are smaller units, that it, it, it could be entirely rental. But what we're saying is that's not permitted in what we have. It, only 50% could be rented. So, mm -hmm. I mean, limiting someone's ability to rent something that they own is already a stretch in my book. And, you know, if we don't have a distinction between short term and long term rentals, then we can only talk about rentals, allowing rentals or not allowing rentals in here mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a problem that needs to be solved in the definition of differential and, you know, and I think rentals. probably you know the most we can do is say this and then and then what happens down the road is really going to be up to the HOA to say if all of a sudden everything's become rentals and people don't like it well that's an HOA concern that's not ours anymore what is HOA? The homeowners uh, association. Yeah. Oh. They're, they're going to be the well, ones that are going to come up with the rules of the, how the. Well, the other thing is, and a lot of people don't realize it, but if you have a mortgage on your unit, a lot of times your mortgage states that it is a single family home. It's not to be rented. Now, that your mortgage company isn't going to come out and check, right. but if you look at your mortgage, a lot of times they specify that it is for you, it is your primary. Specify home hmm. because it is interest rate if you're because the interest rate is different if you're doing a rental oh, okay that makes sense i would suggest then on number four we just leave the language as is yeah that sounds good that's what i'm thinking now okay and then number five um in a discussion with public work staff it was suggested that we have the following language and that was prior to the planning commission conditional use hearing a preliminary meeting with utilities and planning staff to review the project must be held that makes sense. I think that's good. Yeah, I think okay. that's good. Keep that. And then also I wanted to add, uh, well, I didn't mention it in this, but under number five, when we talked about an, an yeah, Village Yale Springs engineer will provide a written report of findings to the Planning Commission. Um, and I, instead of the engineer will just maybe change it to the engineer may be present at the, it might not need them to be okay. with the written yes. report. Okay. Maybe present. Maybe okay. present. And then um, it's the, last the it's other thing that's come up recently: um, the United States Postal Service has changed um, the way that we can now do our mailboxes in any new development. Um, so I just put that in there. Number seven: mailboxes mm -hmm. shall follow yeah. the U.S. Postal Service requirements for cluster box units (CBUs) is what they're called. They're not going to allow new neighborhoods to have individual mailboxes wow yeah yeah and um that's all i know what cluster box units so like a multi-family unit there would be one mailbox and just all the mail would go in it no 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 no
multiple. Ones for each. They have oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. still have a single like individual the mail. mailbox. They would just be all together. Together. Yes. Yes. They'll all be grouped together. So the, that makes sense. The postal service employee can drive up and just take care of all the. Doesn't units. have to walk yeah, as far. Place, yeah. yeah. And so I don't think we need to be concerned now about uh, the cluster housing just stays the same then since we weren't changing it with that clustering of units. Um, so we'll just go to common open space. Oh, wait, so if we're in the de definitions now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. in our next oh, okay. public hearing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so we just stop. We just wow. like, covered a lot of ground there. Or did we? Um, so this is a public hearing. And so if... <laughs> you have any comments on anything we were just talking about um, or any other part of this part of the code, uh, like open a public hearing and um, if you'd like to step forward and identify yourself and, uh, and uh, express your point and uh, or ask a question. Or ask a question. I'm uh, Barbara Batcher. I'm very supportive of PNDs. Um, I have one question. I've asked it to Denise twice. I'm still grappling with it. And that is whether or not a unit in a PND directly owns the land underlying the unit. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Denise, it's my old question okay. about whether or not the, the unit, I just, uh, because I keep reading language in the paper that says indivisible lot, which always throws me. And well, I, what will happen is if the de developer doesn't do it, the Green County engineer will create lot lines uh -huh. and designate that portion that your house is sitting on, uh -huh. that land that it's sitting on, they will decide what is your private land. Uh -huh. They'll make that distinction if the developer does not. Okay. That's okay. The, that so sounds reassuring. And so yeah, no, yeah, I, and then, I know we bear, you know, the share of the taxes. Yeah. Well, and then what they'll do is they'll take all the common areas, calculate that, and divide that right. up among all the people that are in the private lots, and you'll all share in that. And so area. that's what you can sell. Sort right, yeah, when you stake. sell your unit, you yeah. will sell the building and yeah. the land. Yes. And granted, yes. it'll be a, yeah. a, a very small parcel. Yeah. Immediately lying, but your but your tax might be higher because you're right. also sharing in the cost. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, and I'm sorry yes. to keep asking it, but that language in the paper that says indivisible lot always yeah. throws me off. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. <laughs> All righty, thank you. Uh, anyone else? <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Pat Stemfley, and. I want to thank all of you for the preliminary work on this because it is complicated. <laughs> and I love the last page of the handout about this is an ev evolutionary process, and it really is. And so I look forward to kind of collaborating everybody's thinking to figure this out because I really think it's going to be a cool thing for the village eventually. Uh, for smaller neighborhoods that are affordable where people can connect. Um, and we're, of course, sent the letter because we're very interested in senior housing, but I can see this possibility for all age groups. But there's a lot to it, but you brought up some really good points tonight, and we've been working on this for a while, and I know the village, you know, with the, the uh, needs assessment and the study. I mean, it's going to be fascinating. But I think if we all put our hearts and minds in it, we'll come up with really a neat plan for the whole village. And that's what we look forward to. So thank you for the preliminary good work. Thank well, you. thank you. I mean, sorry about the sausage making. I know it's kind of been <laughs> gruesome here today, but uh, um, I think we all think it's a great idea. It's just how do you, you know, get those details hammered out. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, add comments on this uh, this public hearing? If if not, we'll close that public hearing. Do we have any further discussion here about any of these comments or modifications? I have a question. Uh, under the um, we had struck out the um, 
unenclosed covered patio, a front porch. Front porch. Is it okay to have a screened-in front porch? Yeah, I mean, no one's saying you can't have a porch. Okay, so that does not meet in closed. No, we're just saying that that's not going to be a part. We're not having private. We're not open about space about anymore, private so we're not worried space. about that anymore. Yeah. So you I, can, I, I just wanted the people to be able to screen yeah. in their front porch. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, that's the only comment I have. Anyone else? The, and the only other thing I was I had a little concern about was landscape screening um, for the parking lots and for the other neighbors that might not be as thrilled about having this in, next to their lot. And um, I think number eight, other considerations not addressed specifically shall follow the requirements of the Yale Springs, Springs Planning and Zoning Codes is important because then we can refer them to what will be, is required in there under um, parking lot landscaping and that kind of Good. green belt thing. So I think we're yeah. covered there as well. Good. Okay. Okay, well, um, Judy, are you kind of square on these <laughs> modifications? Uh, I, I will be. I have a lot of things written down and I have... Between the, the two of us, we'll get it. Yeah. Okay. So, no, I will. I mean, if you said right now, read them all back, I'd oh, have to run out the back, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, if that's the case, then do we have a motion to accept these changes? I move that we amend Chapter 1262.08 with um, the additional amendments that we made tonight. Second. There's a second. Judy, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Humphling. I think I'm going to abstain because I, I feel a little bit too much out of the loop of this discussion. Zerbuchen? Yes. Holzell? Yes. Style? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. okay. Next item on our agenda. Is anybody press for time? It's 8.30. <laughs> uh, the, hopefully it's a little quicker. Yeah, this is, um, th there really isn't any anything in here except um, under common open space, one of the things that I noticed um, on one of the zoning codes that's in your packet is they mentioned uh, when they were describing the common open space, they mentioned um, all the things that we put in there, but also on slopes of 10% or less and developed and maintained so it is usable for active or passive recreation activities. In other words, they're not going to count that hill that no one can use as, part, as the common open space. So 10% or less. Okay. And I was wondering what you, if you thought that might be something to add as well. I like that. Anyone else have any opinion? I think it sounds fine. Fine. Reasonable. Okay. Anything else on the uh, definitions? That was it. I, I what? Wait, what? That, just, that definition. just that definition. Yeah, I had the other ones in there just for um, clarity with as we were talking about some of this other stuff. Okay, so we'll... Um, and, and we are striking then cluster housing, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this, uh, this public hearing is on a, uh, the change in definition for um, common open space and the deletion of cluster housing. Uh, if you have any comments about that, feel free to come up. Um, if not, then we'll close that public hearing. Does anyone have any further discussions about the change in definition here? If not, Judy, could you call the roll? Do you need to have a motion? Oh, we need a motion. <laughs> oh well, I move that we uh, amend 1284.03 uh, with the it, with the amendment that we made. I'm not saying that very well. <laughs> that we're we're approving it with the additional changes. Removing <laughs> cluster housing and adding oh. slopes. <laughs> Ten percent or less. With suggested changes. Yes, with perhaps? suggested changes. Yeah. Yes. We have a there you go. Second. Second. All right. Okay. Uh, Hempling, are you on the yeah. show? Yes. You good? Okay. Uh, Pelzel? Yes. Reed? Yes. Style? Yes. Serbukin? Yes. 
And I just want to let you know that hopefully we won't be seeing all this again, but we are going to come back uh, at our next meeting. And uh, for some reason throughout this whole process, I missed um, putting it into the schedule of district uses. I put, in, I put this all into the schedule of residential uses and nobody's caught it. And I just caught it the other day. So we'll have to come back and have a have a review of that, so it's going to put things a little out of sync, but I'm, I'm moving forward with council on this so we don't have any more delays. Okay, so that being said, the next public hearing is for amending chapter 1284.05 to add the definition of homeowners association. Nothing, I didn't have any no comments. I didn't, no, no comments, no. Any questions for Denise? No. Uh, this is a public hearing regarding the change in definition. Um, if you like to uh, go forward and um, comment on this uh, definition, feel free. If not, um, I'll close the public hearing. And do we have a motion to consider this? I move we consider it. This um, chapter. 1284.05. Second. So we we're are not just considering it. You wanted to approve? Yes. We're so I move we approve it. I think we've already done that. Have we? Yeah. I'm getting tired. We're, we're just going to approve it. We can do it again, but the language hasn't changed. What about the pocket neighborhood language? Has she added that in case we did the clustering, I think. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah, we, right. Be, um, yeah. Well, I, I used, I put it in there for def defining and we ended up noticing it. But we've already, uh, we've already done both. We've already done, we've already done these two. So, so we don't need to have this public hearing? Mm -hmm. no. We've already approved this? Mm -hmm. So okay. you don't need to call the roll? We've approved both of these? While well, I'm highly disappointed. Yeah. So okay. I think at the last meeting. Great. Yeah, we did. Like it, just, I, I put them in, and they ended up being publicly noticed as a, as for us to refer to in this document. Okay. Because there were so many Great. changes in the first part. Just for so we're done. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. Okay. So the next item on our agenda is old business, and that's a process for comprehensive land use plan update. Do you want us to talk about this? Mm -hmm. Not right now. We've got so many other things that came up. Yes. It's going to go to the back burner again. And we have new business: the housing needs assessment review. Oh, I just to put that in the packet. Um, Marianne McQueen um, had requested that um, if anybody has any input because they're getting ready to do a request for proposals for a housing needs assessment. Um, if you had any comments that you wanted added, you can either relay them through me or Judy, and we can get it to Patty, uh, who's doing the request for proposal. Okay. Yeah, and I'm. You might also say that she's making a request too to form a, uh, an advisory committee if anyone is interested. Okay. Yeah, I had some questions about this. I don't know whether Judy wants to address them or we just. I, I want to know what the budget was for the. Uh, I don't remember. For the housing needs assessment. Right. I don't remember. Um, I, I'd be interested in information about. Joining a such a committee. I didn't hear you. Um, I don't. I don't recall what what council gave us a budget for that. I don't know if they have at this point because I don't know that you determined scope. Or yeah. Anything else. They I don't. I don't okay. think it's there yet. Okay. Um, under the uh, housing inventory, uh, this is on page three. Um, While well, they're doing the demographic data and the housing inventory. Uh, this might be an opportunity to find out how many short-term rentals there are in town, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that put uh, ask that. Um, Actually, on the short-term rentals, because the lodging tax wants that. I mean, in the very immediate future, that should be clear because the lodging tax will affect those people. So before the housing needs assessment is done we should have that information. So I don't think this the housing needs assessment needs to address that. Okay, so you... Because if we're doing lodging tax on those short-term rentals... But this is happening September. Uh, time frame is so short for 
from having this done? I, I think that they're being they're asked to out. look at existing data, like from Greene County, um, to, okay. to see what, uh, how many dwelling units they have, how many are, you know, what we're interested in is <clears throat> what are accessory dwelling units. We may not know all of those because you know, right. they used to be able to be separately metered, so they might right. have a half oops, like a half address. Um, and then on page four, there was a presentation of initial data will be to the steering committee. And is that formed yet, or this is, that's what It hasn't there. even been decided to do it, as far as I know. Uh, that's the suggestion. Well, that's, that's what, been I mean, a this suggestion is the RFP, that will be. Yeah, this is what Marianne wanted them to review, okay. so. And, um, what's in there? Again, on page four, um, up at the top, uh, development availability, um, the analysis of growing trends and uh, glass farm. To me, this seems like this is part of planning commission's job. Um, so I'm, it's great that they are going to do all of this footwork, but the planning commission could be the steering committee are the people who, I mean, this to me seems to be our function. Well, except that, I, I mean, our function is kind of what council tells us to correct, do also and correct. to focus on. But I'm just making that as a comment. And then, um, so, you know, so you're to use us, court. use us, <laughs> I mean, you know, we've gone through all of that verbiage of the uh, pocket neighborhood development, uh, the needs assessment is going to be done, so, you know, maybe filter it through us. Well, and Chris, there's, there's a, um, Elizabeth Voigt mm -hmm. came and gave a presentation to council at the last meeting that might interest you in terms of some of the suggestions that she made or, or along the lines that you're suggesting, which was she really stressed using uh, local expertise, using those folks who have some knowledge already about land availability and some notion about needs and really tapping into community uh, resources. So, I mean, that, she stressed that quite heavily. I, I don't think that's something that's being ignored in the process, but you might be interested in just seeing that. And, okay. um, I, I like the idea of a steering committee because it's asking people to come in and serve for a short amount of time on a specific project sure. and you know we're in it for the long haul and we should all be involved but bringing other people in who aren't necessarily interested in being on the planning commission um, to help us do that work it's really important so I do keep us updated about the steering committee and and you know yeah. we'll try and go as much as possible but if well, there's other stuff to do you know it shouldn't I was going to say, I, it was, uh, there was a council meeting where Liz Voigt was at that meeting and presented. I guess they put her on kind of last minute because she was moving out of, <laughs> moving out of town, out of state, um, and she's got a lot of expertise. But um, I don't think a decision's been made about that. So I think it's going to be being discussed at council how to, you know, once we get that housing needs assessment and how to move forward. Because I think that the the results of that will play play into the comprehensive land use plan. Sure, well. yeah, absolutely. Sure. So sure. This, yeah. you know it. it uh, but I think I think too. I think with the uh, the way I understood this with the with the request for proposals that um, whoever ends up getting this is also going to utilize as many of these local resources. Right as a way because rather you're gonna reinvent the wheel. We already have the data somewhere. We're gonna we're gonna right. provide as much of the data that we already have. Um, and in as well as what Green County has too. That's it for my question. Yeah. No okay. comments. Thanks. And you said if we have comments to send them yeah. in. Yeah, okay. send them to Judy and we, or myself oh. and we would okay. transfer them on to uh, Which Judy? Judy. Judy. Okay. Judy. We can get them to uh, Patty and Mary Ann. Judith. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patty and Mary Ann are doing the okay. Okay. RFP and stuff. Yeah. So I'm giving you my comments. Thank okay. you. Okay, so we have agenda planning is next, but I think uh, uh, it, 
we're going to not doing this next time. Is that correct? Right. The next meeting, which um, I we absolutely have to have everybody here for, um, so we're going to hold our meeting September 25th. And everybody's good because people weren't available on September 11th. September 25th work. Okay. okay, so the next meeting is September 25th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what we're going to be doing is um, a there's been a final plan that was submitted for the CBE, but we're going to be doing a, a final plan phase one with a replat that's being done by the village <clears throat> in order to carve out a piece of the land for Cresco. Mm -hmm. And then Cresco will be here as well uh, with the, their conditional use hearing for their site plan review. Have they gotten approved by the state yet? No. Okay. No. So, of course, as far as taking this information and then actually uh, filing it with Green County, we're going to wait yeah. from here until they get there. So there's no meeting on the 11th, the meeting is on the 25th. Yeah, and this will give them more time to, and we have a, my fault. an engineer, we'll that we have um, an engineer that's, you know, has to redo the road a little bit slightly, and um, we just need that time. And do they think they'll have approval by then, or they're hoping? They're this is required they for Approval is that oh, my understanding? Okay. This is required for the part of their approval process. They need certain. Things it's required of, for us. They have to be able to be up and operational. I think within nine months or six. Okay. Months. It's a pretty short time. Yep. So they will need this. So basically, the state um, said they would let them know by September, but apparently the state <laughs> did, was not. I think quite. Uh, aware of just or yeah prepared for for what the sheer volume of information that they they were requesting and they got. Uh. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean Cresco's application oh, process. Yeah, Cresco probably had fifteen hundred pages. No, seven thousand. He said. Oh, is it seven thousand? Yes, five hundred. Okay, now that's a lot. And then, you, <laughs> and then you take into consideration times one hundred and eighty some applications. No, it's not. Wow. How many? Yeah. So, how many are so they now they're looking at their, the states delayed themselves yeah. to October or November. Okay. However, they the it's a state statute that these have to be up and running by September two thousand eighteen. Oh. I mean, they have to be doors open and, and actually producing. And they're only approving 24. 12 large. I think there's 12 small. Because they're all large and small. Are and this is going to be a small one? They left. They're large and other states. Okay. So, okay. So, so that's on the 25th. The 25th. Oh, well, that's so exciting. 25th. Yes. 25th. Yes. 25th. Yes. 25th. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to looking what they have. Okay, well, if there's any, is there anything else? I hope so. No. Anything else for you guys? Anybody? Motion to adjourn? Um, well, uh, just to say that once plan uh, council Second. goes somewhere with what they're doing on this tax thing, then we're going to come back to the table on uh, short-term short rentals and rebuy and that. Okay. Yeah. And can I just say real quick, okay. Rose, you... You stated it very clearly, and, it, and it's correct. Council, what council, part of what council has to do is administrative in nature, but it cannot then be enforced until planning commission puts some kind of definition into the code, which is a zoning code process. Oh. So two separate processes, they will both both have to occur. How they can occur, when they can occur, is relatively flexible, but those two things will have to happen. So further information will be forthcoming. About the how that rental. Process. We'll be looking at this again. We'll You're talking about rental. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In yeah. terms of a definition, in terms of how that works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're ready for the motion to adjourn? Yes, we are. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So that was <laughs> I seconded. Oh, All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank that was you. a great Bye. meeting. Take care. Bye, Bye Joe. Bye.
Oh, I'm oh, really? 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 Oh,